All right, so we're going to use a practical example to show you what these gates are for and why they might be useful. Let's imagine um, we want to build a device that um, turns on and off a smart light in your house based on some state of the world. So let's say, you know, this is information about the world. We don't know where it comes from, but let's imagine that this one says um, something about the time. Um, say this one says it's um, after 8 in the morning. We want a light to turn on, well not 8 in the morning, we want a light to turn on just before we come home from work. So uh, we want it to turn on when we open the garage door or uh, we want it to turn on when it's 5 o'clock. Both of those situations should turn on the light. So here is a clock <clears throat> that says it is currently 5 o'clock. When it's 5 o'clock this signal goes to 1, other than that it's at 0. Here is a piece of information from the outside world that says I just arrived home. So here is my icon for home. So I press the garage door opener or something. Who knows? I've arrived at home. That's a piece of information from the outside world. So this piece of information we're going to call clock. This one we're going to call home. This information comes from the outside world somewhere. Um, but what we can do is we can put it into uh, a box that then tells us whether the light is on or off. Now, this box can be a computer, or it can be an electrical relay, or who knows what. Uh, but it's going to take information from these two sources and make a decision on whether or not the light should be on or off. Now, uh, we could build a custom circuit to do that. We could use transistors. We've got these things called gates that we talked about earlier that we could use to make this thing happen. Now, um, you probably already know what gate we want to use, and you probably already know how to put it together. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I want to give you uh, this example in a much higher level of detail. Imagine that we don't know that we'll just drop an OR gate in here and everything will be fine. Uh, so what is the level of detail we're going to use? Well, we're going to draw out a truth table. And that truth table is going to tell us all the possible circumstances. Here are the two values, C and H, and then we want to know what the state of the light will be based on the states of C and H, our two inputs. So here's C, which is clock is 5 o'clock. Here's H, which means I've pressed the button because I've arrived at home. And what is the state of this light? Well, if the clock is not at 5 o'clock and I haven't arrived at home, well, then the light's not on, obviously. If the clock's not at 5 o'clock, but I have arrived home, the light should turn on. If the clock's at 5 o'clock, but I haven't arrived home, it should turn on. And if the clock says 5 o'clock and I have arrived home, it should be on. These are the four possibilities for this state. Now, in this case, we can look at this, and if we have enough familiarity with these gates, we look at this and say that's an OR gate, obviously. Well, we can also solve this other ways. We can look at different possibilities. We can find other gates that we can look at. There's lots of different ways we can solve this problem. And later on in the, in the series of videos, I'll show you for more complicated truth tables, different ways to solve it. But notice how I said this. I said, if the clock is zero and if, the <clears throat> if me arriving home is zero. So if these two things happen together at the same time, then the output is zero. Okay? The output is true if these two happen at the same time. So if the clock is zero and the home is one, or if the clock is 1 and the home is 0, or if the clock is 1 and the home is 1. So I'm saying AND a lot, which implies that I've got some sort of a AND gate happening, even though this clearly looks like an OR gate. What I'm talking about here is the way that we can sculpt this into a function. Okay? What this says is if the clock is 0 and home is 1. Now, in what circumstances would the clock be 0 and the home is 1. How could I write out a term that should be equal to 1 if the clock is 0 and home is 1? Well, if the clock is 0 and the home is 1, if I want this to be 1, I should change the clock from 0 to 1 by inverting it. If the clock is 0 and home is 1, then the output should be 1. There's another possibility. If the clock is 1 and the home is 0, so I invert h, and I make C, so if the clock is 1 and the home is 0, this term is 1. That counts for that term. Here, I also want it to be 1 if the clock is 1 and the home signal is 1. So this is the complete 
indication of every situation in this, in this circuit where the output should be 1. So this is L for the light equals C prime H corresponds to this term, C H prime corresponds to this term, and C H corresponds to that term. So these are the three terms that correspond to the situation where this equals 1. Now, we can do some simplification on this and get to the point where we know L equals CH is our answer because that looks like an OR gate. Or sorry, not CH, C or H. Right? That looks like an OR gate. But because of the way that I've described this, this happens and this happens, that's a zero. So we don't have that term here. This happens or th this happens and this happens together. We have a one. So that's this term. We have the three ones in our truth table indicated by three terms. And this is a very overt way of discuss describing it, but if we simplify from here, we can use all sorts of interesting simplifications to get to this point, because that's what we know the answer is, because this looks like an OR gate. Right? Uh, so let's try to simplify it. We can duplicate this term, and then we can pull into here. This equals CH plus CH, so we're just rearranging terms. And then CH prime, or CH, so we've duplicated this, and it's a good idea to uh, indicate using the rules. This is um, idempotent. It means X or X equals X, and it allows us to duplicate terms. Then we're rearranging. What's the rule that we can use to rearrange things? Uh, that is uh, commutative commutative. Okay? Then what we're going to do is we're going to collect these together. I hope there's enough room here. This is C prime or C H or C. Whoops. Pull out the, so I pulled out the H from here and I pulled out the C from here. C H prime or H. Okay? And this is distributive. And I'm just about out of room, so I'm going to move over here <coughs> to finish this off. <gasps> Pardon me. <clears throat> so C prime or C H, C H prime or H. We know that C or C prime is zero because there's no situation where both the value and its opposite are true. So C or C prime is zero. Uh, and this is, in fact, our, um, I, there's an identity rule for that, or actually or with the opposite. We call this the um, opposite rule. So we can say that C or C prime, I think I have got room here. This is 0. This is 0. Did I do that wrong? I did that wrong. It's not 0. It's 1. We call this the identity. C or C prime is 1. Right? If C is true, then C or C prime is true. If C is false, then C or C prime is true. So this identity is or with the inverse, and it's 1 all the time. So that's 1, that's 1. So up here, uh, carrying on, we have 1 or h, uh, 1 and h, or 1 and c, and we say x or 1 equals x, which is an identity, which means this equals h or c, l equals h or C. And this is what we expected to happen at the beginning, right? This was just looking at it, we knew this was an OR gate, right? And describing the problem, we said OR, right? If the clock is at 5 o'clock or I arrive home, the light should be on. So we already know that that was the answer. But this process of looking at every term in the, in the truth table, drawing out a term for it, right? Every one in the truth table, and drawing out a term that corresponds to the inputs required for that to happen, and we write all those out, and what we get is uh, this solution. And that's great, because this shows us the wider process for more complicated problems. Drawing in a truth table, drawing in a term for each one of these, and then simplifying them as much as we can, and then drawing the circuit. So here's the circuit, right? Uh, H and C and L, that's the circuit. It's just an OR gate. No big deal. But for more complicated problems, this process will allow us to get the answer every time.